So in the previous video, we talked about the if function. Now in this video, I want to talk about the if error function. Now let's take a look at the if error worksheet in the if error workbook. In column A, we have a number and in column B, we have a divisor. And in column C, we have a calculation. It's the number, so A2 divided by the divisor. So 25 divided by five equals five. 52 divided by 13 equals four. Okay, and so on down the list. But when we try to do 54 divided by zero, well, that gives us an error because you can't divide a number by zero. And it gives us this little divide by zero error, okay? And in the next row, we're saying 34 divided by Z, and that's giving us this hashtag value error. Okay, so these cells are error cells. And in cell C7, we're trying to do a total, but it's not working because we have all these cells with errors. So the if error function will tell Excel what action to do if there's an error in a value. So let's come up here into cell D2, and let's initiate our if error. Now it's asking us what value do we want? Well, we want to do A2 divided by B2. Now let's hit comma. Now it's asking what value do we want if there's an error? So let's put in quotations, not a valid value. And let's close the quotations. And now let's close the if error formula. Okay, now let's do an autofill and let's bring these formulas down and you can see for rows five and six, it's showing not a valid value. And now we're able to properly calculate the sum because it ignores those text strings. So that's how an if error function works, but I wanna show you a more practical example. So let's come over here into the sales worksheet. And this is a similar worksheet to some of the other ones we worked on earlier. And in column D, we have the total price, which is the sales price times the quantity. And in column E, we want to figure out the cost, which is in this inventory list, okay? And then in column F, we want to calculate the profit, which is the price minus the cost. Well, in order to do the cost, we need to do a VLOOKUP. So let's do the VLOOKUP, which we learned about earlier. The lookup value is going to be A2. The table array is going to be column A through C, and then the column index number is going to be three because we want that third column and then we're going to type false for exact match and let's hit enter and now we see that the cost is not available because it's not on this inventory list but we actually have two inventory lists so this particular SKU is on the second inventory list so if it's not on the first inventory list then we want to do a lookup to the second inventory list in order to find it. Well, for this, we're gonna have to do an if error formula. So let's go back into the formula and let's type if error. And now for the first value, we want the original VLOOKUP that we have on here. But if, if that returns an error, then we wanna do another VLOOKUP. And the lookup value is still gonna be cell A2. But this time the table array is gonna be in the worksheet inventory list number two, and it's gonna be A through C. And then the column index number is still gonna be three, and then we're still gonna say false. And now we close out the V lookup, but now we also need to close out the if error function and hit enter. Okay, now we see the cost 786 for this particular SKU because it checked the first inventory list. It couldn't find it, so it returned an error but then it checked the second inventory list once it realized that there was an error in the first VLOOKUP. So let's do an autofill and copy these formulas down. And now we have all of our costs and we were able to calculate the profit. Now in this lecture, I'm gonna go over the sum if, count if, average if, max if, and min if functions. Now this might sound a little bit overwhelming right now, but they're all pretty easy functions to learn and they all basically work the same exact way. So let's take a look at the box scores worksheet in the NBA sum ifs workbook. So in columns A through F, 
we have a bunch of data related to NBA box scores. So basically, it has every single player's fantasy points for every game during the 2018-2019 season. So in column A, we have the date. In column B, we have the player's name. In column C, we have the player's position. In column D, we have the team that the player plays for. In column E, we have the opponent's so the team that the player went up against on that evening. And then in column F, we have their fantasy points for that specific game. So let's put a filter on this data by hitting control shift L. Okay, and let's go to the player. So column B, and let's search for Stephen Curry. And let's filter for Stephen Curry. And now we see all of his games during the NBA season. Now let's suppose that we wanted to see what Stephen Curry's total fantasy points were, so everything in column F for the 2018-2019 season. Well, let's come here into cell F3 and let's go down to the bottom of this range. So let's hit control shift and the down arrow. And now we have all of these cells selected. And if you look here at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that the total, so the sum of all of his uh, fantasy points is 3026.4. You also see that there's a count and the count is 68. That means there were 68 games that he played in during the season. And then the average is 44.5. Okay, so let's go back up to the top of this range and let's turn off the filter. Now there's another way to calculate Stephen Curry's total fantasy points without having to put a filter on, and that's the sum if formula. So let's come over here into cell I2 and let's initiate the sum if formula. So we want to choose this first one, sum if. Now it's asking us for the range. Well, the range is going to be the range of cells that contain the player's name because we want to find Steph Curry. So let's choose column B as the range. And like I said, I like selecting columns rather than selecting cell ranges. And now it's asking us for the criteria. Well, the criteria is going to be the name of the player. So in this case, the criteria is going to be cell I2 because we have the player's name here. And now the sum range is going to be column F because that's where all of his fantasy points were. So let's close out this function. And if I did this correctly, it should return that same total as before, the 3,000 26 I believe and it did now remember in our formula the criteria is referring to cell I2 here so if I wanted to I can change the player's name so let's type LeBron James here and now you see that the total points changes to reflect this so remember this number here 2924.5 so let's go into column B and let's put a filter on for LeBron James just to check and make sure we got it right and if we select all of these cells here, we see that the total is 2,924.5. So we know that it's working correctly. Now remember this number right here, the count, 56. Now let's go back to the top of this data. Let's turn off the filter and let's come into cell I4 here. So in this cell, we wanna figure out how many games LeBron James played. Well, we can use a count if formula in order to determine this. So let's initiate the count if formula. And now it's asking for the range. Well, the range is going to be the range that has the player's name. So it's going to be column B. And now the criteria is going to be the player's name, which is right here in cell I2. Now let's close out the parentheses. And if I did this correctly, it should show 56, which we determined was the count. And it did show 56. So we know that this is working correctly. Now, if we wanted to calculate LeBron James average, we can use a simple division formula here. It's going to be cell I3 divided by cell I4. So his total points divided by his total games played. And now we see his average is 52.2. But there's also another formula that I want to show you called the average if formula. So let's use the average if formula instead, just so you can see how to do it. So let's begin by typing up the formula. And now here you see it, average if. So let's click on that. And now it's asking for the range. Well, the range is going to be the range that has the player's name. So that's going to be column B. And now the criteria is going to be the player's name. So that's going to be cell I2. And now it's asking for the average range. 
Well, that's the range of cells that has the fantasy points. So that's going to be column F. And let's close out the parentheses and let's hit enter. And now we see that same average, 52.2. And I want to point something out. The average if formula pretty much works the same exact way as the sum if formula. So if you look at the average if formula, the range is column B. The criteria is cell I2. And then the average range is column F. And if we come into cell I3 and we look at the sum if formula, we see the same exact parameters for this formula. The range is column B. The criteria is cell I2. And the sum range is column F. Okay, so when I said earlier in this video that they all pretty much work the same exact way, that's what I meant. The only difference is the function name. Now, let's not worry about the best game and worst game yet. We'll look at that later. But let's suppose that we had more than just one criteria because in this example, we only had one criteria and that was the player's name. But what if we had more than one criteria? So let's come into cell I10 here. And what if we wanted to figure out what Stephen Curry's total was against the Clippers? That's what the abbreviation LAC stands for. Well, now we have two different sets of criteria. We have the player's name and we have the opponent that he went up against. So now instead of using the sum if function, we're going to have to use the sum ifs function. So let's begin by typing the sum ifs function. Okay, and now let's choose it from this list. We don't want to choose the sum if function. We want to choose the sum ifs. And now it's pretty much the same as before, except the parameters are in a different order. The first thing that it's asking for is the sum range. So that's going to be the range of cells that have the, the fantasy points. So if you rem remember from before, that was column F. Now it's asking us for criteria range one. Okay, so that's going to be column B because that's where the player's name was. And now it's asking us for the first criteria. That's going to be the player's name. Now it's asking us for criteria range number two. Well, that's going to be the opponent. So column E. And then the criteria number two is going to be cell I12 or I'm sorry, I11 here. And you could add as many different uh, criteria as you need. But in this case, we only need two different criteria. So let's close out the function and let's hit enter. And now it's showing that Stephen Curry scored a total of 100.2 points against the LA Clippers this season. And let's do a filter and figure out if that's correct. So let's come over here to player and let's type Stephen Curry. And now let's come over here to opponent and let's filter for um, LAC, which is the Clippers. And now we see he has two games against the Clippers and his total is 100.2. Okay, so let's turn off these filters. And let's come into cell uh, I13 here. And now we want to figure out the games played. Well, that's going to be the same as before, except we're going to use the count ifs formula. Okay, now it's asking us for criteria range number one. Well, that's going to be the range of cells with the player's name. And now it's asking us for criteria one. That's going to be the player's name. And now it's asking us for criteria range number two. That's going to be column E, where it has the opponent's teams. And now let's hit comma. And now it's asking us for criteria number two. And that's going to be cell I11 over here. Now let's close out the parentheses. And if this worked correctly, it should say two. Because he played two games against the LA Clippers. And it is showing two. So that's working fine. Now we want to figure out the average fantasy points for Stephen Curry. And same as before, we could do a calculation and take this 100.2 and divide it by two. Or we can use the average ifs formula. So let's use the average ifs formula. Now it's asking for the average range. Well, that's going to be column F still. The criteria range number one is going to be column B. The criteria number one is going to be cell um, I10 here. And now criteria range number two is going to be the opponent. And then criteria. The criteria number two is going to be cell I11 over here. And let's close out this function and hit enter. And now we see the average of 50.1.
Now let's come back into cell I6 over here and we want to figure out what LeBron James's best game was for the season. Well, we're going to have to use a max if formula, except there is no max if formula. For some reason, there's only a max ifs formula. So the ones with multiple criteria, but we don't have to use more than one criteria, even if you're using a max ifs formula. So let's type it up and now you see it pops up and now it's asking for the max range. Well, that's going to be column F. Okay. And now it's asking for criteria range number one. So that's going to be column B and then criteria number one is going to be LeBron James. Now let's close out the parentheses and that's the only criteria we have for this example. So let's hit enter and now we see LeBron James best game. He scored 77.5 fantasy points. Now we can use a min ifs formula to figure out his worst game. And again, there's no min if formula There's only min ifs. Okay. So let's initiate this formula and now let's choose column F for the min range for the criteria range let's choose column B and then for the criteria let's choose LeBron James okay so the same as the max ifs formula it's just a different function name now let's close out this function and hit enter and now we see that LeBron James's worst game he scored 23.7 fantasy points now let's do a max ifs formula with multiple criteria. So let's come down here into cell I-15 and let's do a max ifs formula to figure out what Steph Curry's best game was against the LA Clippers, okay? So now the max range is still going to be column F. Criteria range number one is going to be column B and criteria one is going to be the player's name, so Stephen Curry. And now criteria range number two, that's going to be the opponent, so column E. And then the criteria number two is going to be cell I11 over here. Now let's close out this function and hit enter. And now we see that his best game against the Clippers, he scored 55.2 fantasy points. So now let's do a min ifs to figure out what his worst game was against the Clippers. So the min range is going to be column F. The criteria range number one is going to be column B. Criteria number one is going to be the player's name. So cell I-10. Criteria range number two is going to be the opponent. So column E. And then criteria two is going to be cell I-11 over here, the opponent. Now let's close out this function. And now we see that his worst game against the Clippers, he scored 45 points. Now let's suppose we want to figure out how many fantasy points Steph Curry scored during a specific time period. Well, we're going to have to get pretty creative with our sum ifs formula. So first of all, let's freeze this top row here. Let me show you how to do that. Let's go to view. And then over here where it says freeze panes, click on freeze top row. And now if you scroll down, the top row is still going to be fixed. Okay. And let's come over here into cell I 22. And now we want to figure out what Stephen Curry's total was for the month of March. So we have a begin date here in cell I-20 and we have an end date here in cell I-21. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use the sum ifs formula. So let's initiate this formula. And now the sum range is still going to be column F. Criteria range number one is still going to be column B. And criteria number one is going to be the player's name. So cell I-19. And now criteria range number two, that's going to be the date column. So column A. And now criteria two, that's going to be where we do something a little bit different. So in quotations, we want to put a greater than or equal to symbol. And now we want to add an ampersand. And then we're going to click on cell I-20 here. So we want it to be greater than or equal to March 1st, 2019. And then criteria range number three, that's also going to be the date column. So column A and the criteria for this one, it's going to be similar. It's going to be less than or equal to close out the uh, less than or equal to symbol. And now do an ampersand and let's click on cell I-21 over here, which is the end date. Now let's close out the function and let's see what happens. Now it's showing that his total points for the month of March is 622.1. So let's put a filter on Steph Curry to see if this, this is working correctly. So let's come up here to player and let's search for Steph Curry. 
Okay, let's choose Stephen Curry. And now for the date, we can filter by a month. So let's choose the month of March here. And let's take the total for all of these cells and voila, 622.1. So that's working correctly. So let's take off these filters. And now we want to do a count ifs to figure out how many games he played in the month of March. So let's initiate the count ifs formula. And now criteria range number one is going to be column B. Criteria one is going to be the player's name. So cell I-19. Criteria range number two, that's going to be the date column. Criteria number two, that's going to be greater than or equal to, in quotes, followed by the ampersand. And then let's click on the begin date. So cell I-20. And now criteria range number three, that's going to be the date column. And then criteria number three, that's going to be less than or equal to, in quotations, followed by the ampersand, followed by cell I-21, which is the end date. So March 31st, 2019. Now let's close out this function. And now we see that the games played for Steph Curry for the month of March was 14. But let's do another filter just to confirm that that's correct. And when we highlight all of his scores, we see that the count is 14. Okay, so that is working correctly. And his average is 44.35. So we're going to do an average ifs now to come up with that figure. So let's take off these filters. And let's come over here into cell I24. And let's initiate our average ifs formula. So now the average range is going to be column F. Criteria range number one is going to be column B. Criteria number one is going to be the player's name, same as before. Criteria range number two, that's going to be the date column. Criteria number two is going to be, quote, open quote, greater than, equal to, close quote, followed by the ampersand, followed by cell I-20, comma and now criteria range number three that's going to be the date column so column a as well and then criteria number three that's going to be open quote less than or equal to the end date so let's put in an ampersand and let's choose the end date which is cell i21 now let's close out this function and now we see that average that we talked about 44.4 .4. Okay, now let's see what Steph Curry's best game was during the month of March. So we're going to use a max ifs formula. But instead of doing the formula all over again, let's go over here into this formula that we already typed with the average ifs formula. Let's copy this text here and let's come here into cell I-25 and let's paste the text. But let's change the formula name to max ifs. And now we see that Stephen Curry's best game during that time period, he scored 58.5 fantasy points. Now let's come back into this. Let's copy this formula. And let's come over here into cell I-26. And now we want to figure out his worst game during this time period. So let's paste that text that we just copied. And let's change this to say min ifs. And now we see that his worst game during that time period, he scored 24.4 fantasy points. And let's do one more filter just to make sure we did that correctly. And now the, the cool thing is when you come into this fantasy points filter, it's sorted from from smallest to largest. So we see that his best game, or I'm sorry, that his worst game was 24.4 fantasy points. And if we go to the bottom, his best game was 58.5 fantasy points. So it is working correctly. Okay, so let's take off these filters. And now if we wanted to, we could change this to LeBron James. And now we can see what his average was during the month of March. He averaged 52.5 fantasy points. He played a total of 12 games. 
His total points was 630.7. His best game was 63.7 points. And his worst game was 38.1 points. Okay. Now let's suppose that we wanted to figure out what the best overall game was for any player. And what the second best game was and what the third best was. And then let's also suppose that we wanted to figure out what the worst game was, what the second worst was, and what the third worst game was. Well, for this, we're going to have to use these small and large functions, which I'm going to talk about in the next video.